Uh, now, the president's fiscal commission votes tomorrow on a plan that would slash the budget deficit by nearly $4 trillion by 2020. 14 of the 18 commission members need to back this plan and send it to Congress. Bloomberg's Peter Cook is standing by Capitol Hill uh, with one panel member who's backing this proposal. Peter. And Betty, that panel member is Senator Kent Conrad, the Democrat from North Dakota, who's also the chairman of the Budget Committee, including uh, being a member of the Fiscal Commission. Thank you for the time, as always. Appreciate it. There are 12 lawmakers on this panel. You are the only lawmaker who's returning to Congress next year to back this plan. Are you walking the plank for this? <laughs> I don't think so. Look, I think walking the plank is failing to stand up and lead at this critical juncture for the country. All we have to do is look at the debt crisis in Europe and understand where we're headed if we fail to act. The greatest threat to our long-term economic security is this debt threat that's hanging over the country. It's time to act. 14 of 18, that's what's needed to send this on officially to Congress. Are they going to get 14? You know, I've frankly never thought we were going to get 14. That is incredibly hard to do in this town to get 14 of 18 to agree on anything. Um, but what I do think will be served is to set an example and to lay out a plan that gets our debt under control and really dramatically reforms the tax system of this country by cleaning out some of the deductions and the exclusions and the loopholes and actually lowering rates, which interestingly enough will produce more revenue. Ninety percent of the new revenue goes to lowering rates to make America more competitive. And of course we make Social Security solvent over the next 75 years and really get America back on track. It's critically important that we do this plan or one like it. So the vote on Friday doesn't necessarily matter? This plan has already had its impact? Well, I think this plan is having an enormous impact. It has changed the discussion in the country, changed the discussion on Capitol Hill. I'd love to get 14 of 18 to agree because then it would go right to a vote in the Senate and the House. But even just laying out a plan, I think, is a victory. Do you think this president, uh, he's the most important vote of all, arguably, for this plan. Do you think President Obama needs to embrace this plan no matter what happens tomorrow? I think he needs to embrace a plan like this one or this one. Uh, you know, you could disagree with some of the details of this plan. Certainly I do. Uh, the question is, are you going to produce a document, a plan, that if implemented gets America back on track? I don't think there is any alternative but to do that. There's a lot of people looking at the situation in Ireland, looking at the situation in Europe with so many of the, the countries there dealing with their sovereign debt issues. Is America really that close? I mean, there are people who look at the market situation now saying, listen, there's a serious situation out there, but Ken Conrad and others, they're being alarmist. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, the best experts that came before this commission uh, have done a 200-year analysis of fiscal crises in countries around the world. What they found is the tipping point is when your gross debt is 90% of your gross domestic product. That's exactly where we are today. We are at the tipping point, looking at financial crises going back 200 years in countries around the world. Anybody that doesn't understand that America is in trouble just isn't paying very close attention. At the same time, you're talking about this long-term picture here, the deficit issue. We have the immediate question of the Bush tax cuts, the fight that's going on there, the talks that are taking place behind closed doors. At the end of the day, how does this get solved? You know, I think all of that's, frankly, much less important than the longer term. Uh, it's critically important we extend, certainly, at least the middle-class tax cuts uh, through this period of economic weakness. And this plan contemplates that. But it also understands you then have to pivot and deal with the long term. The long term is what really ought to concern us, concern us and consume our debate. You can live with a two-year extension temporary for everyone? No, I can if it is tied to fundamental tax reform and if it is tied to a plan to cut spending, uh, to reform the entitlements and get us back on track. Ken Conrad, as always, we appreciate it. Yeah. Betty, we'll send it back to you in New York.